Hello, my name is John Quinn and I want to tell you a little bit about my latest book which is called This Place Speaks to Me. It's based on a radio series I used to do many years ago uh, when I worked with RT Radio where I would take somebody to a particular place that influenced them uh, in their childhood or in their adulthood or wherever. It could be a town, it could be a house, it could be a, a ruin, it could be a bog, it could be anything. But they would enthuse about it and uh, talk about how it influenced them and I've assembled uh, a, a list of uh, people for the purpose of this book and also included a few places I visited myself since uh, my retirement from RT, places like Gallipoli and Ephesus and the Holy Land. This uh, short piece is from the writer Polly Devlin. She grew up in Argo in uh, County Tyrone and was kind of in a place that was landlocked between Loch Ney on one side and a huge aerodrome on the other side. But this is just the last uh, paragraph of uh, Polly Devlin's piece. My life isn't peopled by phantoms, but by memory, particularly the memory of my siblings, whom I loved dearly and who are all still alive. The fact that we had this rural paradise around us was a bonus. I was moved by reading that Wordsworth said he had been sprung into poetry by hearing a walnut fall. Wherever we grew up, we have all had the equivalent of Wordsworth's walnut some secret childhood sound which, if we hear it again, will bring us back to where we were. The walnut in my life came when I was allowed access to the aerodrome and saw the skylark rise from its nest and soar above me. No matter how high it climbs, you never lose sight of it. And then down from this tiny black speck comes this extraordinary song that falls like silvery blue shavings of sound all about you. Anything that is poetic in me was awakened by that sound, the song of the skylark. This is a piece from an artist by the name of Paddy Graham, a very well-known artist who lives in Dunleary now. But he grew up in County Westmeath and had a kind of a sad childhood. His father left and his mother couldn't cope, so the children were farmed out to live with grandparents and uncles, and he was sent to live with his grandparents and uncles in a little farm in County Westmeath. And this is Paddy Graham revisiting that place. And there's a wonderful eye and ear of an artist here. This is a very quiet place, full of wonderful silence. As a child when I came here, I was full of loneliness and lostness. I didn't know what to make of being here, surrounded as I was by all people. We're looking across at what used to be a poppy field. I melt into that field when I think of it. I would walk into the middle of it as a child and sit down in the sea of red. I was a tiny child, so the poppies enveloped me in a glistening lime green forest of stalks. I remember that experience with softness and wonder. This was a cinematic dream world for me, but even looking at the reality of it now, with the poppies long gone, it is still wonderful. Listen to that apparent silence. There's a dog barking, probably miles away. The crows are shifting in the trees. My paintings come out of silence. There is a moment when painting is no longer an act of doing or making, but of receiving. I was and still am an incomplete, unfinished person. There is something irreparable in me. I came up here and still do for these silent places. That kind, that kind of silence where you can hear a fly hopping from one leaf to another, a silence that carried sounds from out of my existence into it. This is where my painting comes from. This place is full of caves, glades among the trees, which were secret places for me as a child for hiding and listening. I would climb into the trees and talk to them and to myself and look out at the world. The magical shadows and the dappled light were a visual and sensual delight for me. Then I would come out into the open, a stunning sculpture of green as the sun lit up everything. It is an extraordinary landscape of memory for me, while others would pass up and down here, day in, day out, without noticing anything. The actual name of this place is Windmill, as there was a wind-powered flax mill here. 
An old man told my Uncle Joe that on the night of the big wind the sails went too fast and the mill went on fire. The stone ruin of it fascinated me and I often tried to draw it. My Uncle Joe tells me that as a five or six year old I was always outside with a copy book sketching things. Again, listen to the silence here. The insects buzzing, our footsteps. How lovely and cool it is in this dappled light. This throws me back into a magical world. This is the background to many of my paintings. This is the richness in these long, empty landscapes I use. The nursery shed was another magical place. All those shelves with tiny drawers that had brass handles affixed. Inside was an amazing array of seeds. I used to love looking through the envelopes that had wonderful faraway addresses in New Zealand, Australia and other exotic places. There was a local craftsman, Michael Egan, who painted the wood graining. He would pull hairs from a donkey's tail, tie them to a stick and paint with the most delicate effect. I would stand there open-mouthed, watching him being absolutely sure of everything he did. He would paint shop fronts in the village and then turn to making a wheel rim for a cart, pull it red hot from a charcoal fire before shooing it onto the wheel. To this day I have a great love and respect for craftsmanship like that. There's the old pigsty in the farmyard. I spent a lot of time looking in and chatting to the pigs. I had a great fondness for them. I hated seeing them killed, but I still watched in horror as they were butchered on a table that had already been scrubbed clean with salt. And then there was the surreal killing of the geese. Their heads would be nicked and they bled as they quietly walked around until they dropped to the ground. There used to be a grain store in that loft. Myself and my cousin Pat used to hide in the grain and play tricks on people. I remember how over time the grain would polish the floor of the loft. <laughs>